All right, so in this video, we are going to go over the summary tab for the Adventures in CRE Hotel Acquisitions model. Um, and this is version uh, 2.0. And in the first um, iteration of this model, I released a video on the summary tab, which also had an introduction, um, basically an overview of the model. So I'm going to leave that up um, on YouTube. I'm actually going to try, I think you can shorten it to where it's just giving you the overview of the model because that really hasn't changed. But the summary tab has changed enough that I wanted to do a new video and show you the updates and treat it as if it was really just the first time going over the the actual summary tab. So like in the first video, we're going to start from the left and we're going to review each of these boxes. And we're going to go down and then we're just going to go over to the right and uh, explain to you how this works and how all of these um, these cells are flowing uh, to and from the other sheets in the model. All right, so starting in our um, first box up here, we have our general info and timing. And here you're going to put in your, your property name, the address, city, state, and then the version. And as you can see here, this is version 2, 2.0. And again, if this is, you know, a model that you're going to use and, and alter so that it fits your needs, you know, as you're working on this, every time you go and change assumptions, you'll just come back in here and you'll update. So if this is, for example, uh, you know, 2.5. Um, and what you'll see, what you'll notice up top here is that in the header, it'll always change. So you know um, what version you're in. Um, so that's just a, um, a little feature that's that's in this model. Below that, you have your rooms and keys. And this will flow through the entire model so you can understand uh, what your value is uh, based on based on key count. And so, for example, um, you know, let's come up into formulas. So you trace dependence. So here you can see we're looking at our property metrics, you know, based on uh, per key. So our acquisitions per key and our exit uh, per key, what the dollar amount is. Um, and then we can check here. We have our operating cash flow and you'll see that, um, you know, some of these formulas are dependent upon uh, the actual number of rooms. And so that will flow through here. Um, and then there's one more area which is our penetration analysis. All right, and so moving down, we have our acquisition start, and you can put in your month and your year, and then you'll see that this will flow through. It's a couple spots. So it flows through to our, actually let me remove this arrows here. It'll flow through um, to our operating cash flow statement and to our cash flow summary statement. And so you see here we have September 2019. And then here you'll notice we have September 2020. So September 2019 is really our year zero. And so year one starts October of 2019. And so this is year ending September 2020. All right. And so then moving down, we have the ability to adjust our hold period. And so we have anywhere from one year to 10 years. So for example, if we click on six years, what you'll notice is that we actually have some conditional formatting happening here in our cash flow summary tab and our operating cash flow summary tab um, that will actually gray out the areas beyond our hold period. And then with our operating cash flow, you have year seven because that's our reversion year for which we are calculating our uh, exit price on in year six. All right, so moving on, we have our acquisitions assumptions. And here you have your purchase price method, and there's a drop down menu here. So you can do this one of three ways. You can do a discount rate. Well, it will do a DCF and it'll back into your purchase price based on your, your discount rate. And then below that, we have our cap rate based on year one NOI. And then the final option is you can just put in a custom input. So whatever, whatever price you want, what you think you might buy it for, you can just manually type it in. All right. So underneath that, we have our acquisitions costs um, with our lenders fees excluded. So we have our lender, our loan fees or our lenders fees down here. And then below that, we have the transfer PIP reserve. So what this is, is, you know, many times if you have a flagged hotel or franchised hotel, there's what's called um, a product improvement plan or a property improvement plan, um, which is really the the flags way of making sure that the project stays up to date, 
um, so that they can stay competitive within the market and that it keeps up with brand standards. And so a lot of times when ownership changes hands, um, this creates or triggers an event that allows um, the the flag to go through and, and request major updates so that the the uh, property can be you know as competitive as possible. Um, and so what will happen is you'll get you'll get the dollar amount or you'll get the estimate. And then, you know, many times a lender will, will have you put that total amount in escrow just to make sure that, you know, that money's available. And so you have the ability to add that here. And then down here, you see we have our lender's fees and then we have our all in basis. All right. So below that, we have our financing assumptions. And so we have our loan amount based on our loan to value. And we have our interest rate loan fees. You have the ability to do interest only periods um, and then your amortization periods and then your term. And so below that's the dispersal amount, which is your loan amount net fees and then your interest only payments if you have interest only and then your amortization uh, payments or your payments if you're amortizing the loan down uh, during your hold period and then the loan balance upon repayment. All right, and so here we have our um, exit assumptions, which is the sale price based on the exit cap. Um, you have your sales expenses, all pretty uh, straightforward. And then you have your net sales proceeds and then your net sales proceeds, both unlevered and levered. So this is debt repayment and this is without any debt. All right, so let's move to the right here. So here we have our property level return metrics and we have both unlevered and levered. And then we have our IRR, our multiple on invested capital, which is also the equity multiple. We have our total cash invested, total revenue, total profit, and then the average free and clear return. Um, and then for our levered returns, it's all the same except for our average cash on cash return. So the average free and clear return is basically NOI um, divided by total costs and time period zero. So it's really the, it's an unlevered metric because it doesn't factor in debt. Where the average cash on cash is is the NOI less debt service um, divided by total equity invested. And so to show you um, an example, let's come here to our return metrics se section in our cash flow summary. And here we're in the free and clear return. You could see it's our NOI less our um, total cash invested in time period zero on an unlevered basis. And then for our cash on cash, it's our NOI less debt service divided by uh, total equity invested. All right, so in our next section, we have our property metrics. And here you have our uh, purchase price per key. And then here you have our total um, costs. And then we have our all-in basis, which again is our uh, acquisition costs um, plus our PIP reserve plus lender's fees uh, and the purchase price. And then our all-in basis less debt. And below that's our exit. We have our sale price, our net sales proceeds unlevered and levered. All right, and so below that we have our debt metrics. So we have our minimum debt service coverage ratio and our minimum debt yield. And this is coming in from uh, this section here in our cash flow summary. You can see how we're calculating that here in this section. And so actually, I just want to point out if any of these terms don't make sense to you, uh, you know, debt service coverage ratio or debt yield, you know, you can head over to our adventures in Sierra Glossary on our website. Um, and I'll actually link that in the description below so you can check out any of these terms um, and get familiar with them. All right. So below that, we have our penetration summary, which is um, the summary of our penetration analysis tab here. Um, and we'll just stay high level here because um, we'll go into more detail um, into the penetration analysis in that uh, video. So here really, this is very unique to hotels. So what happens here is you compare this um, particular property compared to others within uh, the defined competitive set. And so you have your occupancy, you have your average daily rate, and you have your revenue per available room. And so what this is basically saying is this is comparing this property to the others. And so for example, in year one, um, Compared to the competitive set, this property in particular is is achieving a 78.7 percent, or is or is achieving 78.7 percent of the occupancy that all of the other properties are achieving. So, for example, let's say the the market occupancy was I don't know 64 percent. That was the average, 
Um, and so then this property in particular would be achieving a 50% occupancy. So that's really how, you know, the, the bar 64 equals 100%. And so they're hitting the 78.7% of that. And so this property is averaging 50% occupancy or 50.34%. All right. So, you know, taking a high level look at occupancy, you can see that it's underperforming and then it appears to go through some sort of um, decline and then it increases to, you know, down the road, it looks like it's going to outcompete the comp set. So that's probably due to the uh, transfer pip, you know, maybe they're going to do a major renovation and the idea is that maybe some rooms are going to come offline and then they're going to come back online and then they're going to outperform. Um, and so then we see ADR is, is above um, the comp set. Um, and then we see that it dips a little and then it comes back up and it looks like it's going to beat it, the comp set on a go forward basis, or at least that's the projection here in this pro forma. And then the rev par, so even though the ADR is over the comp set, the revenue per available room is below. So, you know, maybe they're overcharging on rooms and they're leaving some money on the table. You know, who knows? It's sort of part of the, the bigger analysis. So they're, you know, underperforming here. And then again, they ramp up and it looks like they're going to outcompete the comp set in um, every category. So that's at least what this pro forma is saying. And so again, if, if rev par and ADR, if these terms are unfamiliar, you can check them all out in our glossary. All right, so moving on into our partnership level returns. Um, this is all coming in from our waterfall, our waterfall uh, tab here. And so you'll be able to dial in all your uh, partnership level returns here. And um, there's an extra video on that, so we won't go into the details here, but here's where all the, the um, summary numbers are your cash outflow, profit, IRR, and your uh, multiple on invested capital. And below here, um, we have our year one summary. And this is um, to show you really what's going on in year one. Um, and you can see a little bit, this is how a um, traditional, you know, hotel pro forma is set up. It's, it's very different than the other asset classes, the way it's broken out. And I have a whole um, separate post on how to set up a, um, a performer, how the traditional hotel performers are, are uh, set up. And you can check that out now. It's, it's live um, as we speak on our website. And one of the things I'm noticing I need to correct here is that per occupied room um, is done based on, and you'll see we have op cash flow C9. Let's go there real quick. So op cash flow C9 is our occupied rooms per year. So there is an error in here. That's in our per available room. So per available room, right now I have it um, linked to C8 in our operating cash flow tab, which is here available rooms per year. However, um, you know, the industry standard is actually not to do it that way. And I'm going to fix that now. The industry standard is actually when you're, when you're looking at per available room, it's to just do the total number of rooms, period, regardless of time. So, there are 215 hotel rooms here. And so we need to update all of this. Um, and so I'll stop the video briefly and I'm going to update this. So instead of op cash flow C8 here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to link it just to here to C9. Like magic. Um, all right. So that's our year one summary. And then below that, I've added a sensitivity analysis on your exit year and your exit cap rate. Um, and you can test the sensitivity on three items and you have a drop down menu here. You can test it on profit, test it on the IRR, and you can test it on the multiple on invested capital. And just high level, this shows from year two to 10. And then this here is showing your cap rate and it's linking to whatever your exit cap rate is and it's growing or decreasing by 50 basis points in either direction. All right, so that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this updated uh, version of the model and this summary tab in particular.